so good evening uh, uh, teachers academicians educators a warm welcome to all of you out here and we are really glad that all of you have joined us uh, joined us for a seminar number 8 uh, on the nep that uh, iem uh, global is conducting for all of you today we warmly welcome dr raghuveer yb uh, dr raghuveer is a sincere educator and a well known academician from the past 25 years evolving innovative and creative teaching methods research in his science and education curriculum development authorizing textbooks teacher training resource management academic team building and hassle free administrations are his areas of contribution to the institutions set to be global standards he is sensitive to the needs of the students and keenly attentive to the aspirations of parents yeah, and guardians he is not going to depend on the given pillars in school education they are evident as knowledge and environment which is also called as ske sa ki inga varin pinna kinda the provided for every growing mind in the leadership so uh, dr raghuvi we all well, we welcome all uh, from all the teachers mm. warm welcome to you and let teachers let us welcome you with a big round of applause thank you for that uh, introduction i am proud to be a teacher to uh, share some uh, views for the next one hour of time with all the educators around uh, i'll start the presentation and then uh, parallelly uh, take it forward for relevant examples also all right uh, let it not be a monologue i would uh, request all the participants to be uh, interactive when so ever you want to be asking questions you can you can ask in between so that it becomes relevant as a, a dialogue so two way traffic let it happen not uh, the one way traffic okay and uh, the entire one hour of time i would try to uh, tell not theory but whatever it is to be executed from our end or what we have tried in my school and other schools wherever i have worked whatever is practically possible to be implemented we shall uh, try to focus on that point and uh, elaborate on all right so uh, i'll start sharing the presentation later part of the presentation you will get this uh, ppt is also from uh, uh, team sumati and uh, we shall not um, do this uh, writing work along with listening so all uh, my request is all of you carefully listen to the content whenever there is a a possibility of doubt emerging in you like it can be implemented or it cannot be implemented we shall have a discussion that becomes uh, very productive and uh, execution becomes easy for everybody that's what i feel okay so i'll share the screen now let's see how it can everybody see this yes sir yes sir so it has gone to the presentation mode all right uh basically this uh, topic is about national education policy one second this uh, dialog box is blocking it i suppose yeah pull it down somewhere okay let it be there then um uh, the first uh, two slides it is all about highlighting the national education policy of course most of you must have known about it since in a new environment that we are uh, expected to implement this experiential learning as a topic for today i'll quickly glance through this national education policy highlights i just read through and then take it forward for the actual topic for discussion uh we all know that schooling would be done under uh, the 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 format i mean uh, in the next slide i have made a mention of it you can have a look at it see the five years of fundamental school it commences at four years of age to the child and it goes till eight years so by the time the child uh, completes second standard it will have eight years of age 
three years of preparatory, uh, preparatory school, third, fourth, and fifth is included. By the time 11 years of age is there for the child. Three years of middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth, 14 years will be the, uh, the age for children. And of course, last but not the least, four years of secondary school from ninth standard to 12th standard. It will not stop at 10th standard, but goes still 12th standard. So by 18 years, the student will pass out 12th standard. So the big difference that all of us should have to accept for the years to come is it commences at four years by nursery class and it ends at 18 years for the completion of 12th standard. See, we always uh, call about uh, the Gurukul system. In fact, even in the Gurukul system, uh, the age for first standard onwards was seven years only, six and a half years at least. So we are back to the actual history, right history that uh, our country has created. If we are talking about Finland, so-called the best education practice there in the entire world, Finland also practices the same kind of age appropriate, uh, class appropriate education. So seven years is going to be the age for the first standard children to join. So that's the first uh, uh, information that you should have is five, three, three, four is the way in which NEP is going to be implemented among all the schools. So as on 30th of June, every child should have to be completing seven years of age for first standard to join. So before that, it's of course, junior KG and senior KG. And uh, another major difference is in 10th standard, I'll go back to the previous time. In the, yeah. The students up to fifth grade would be taught in mother tongue, local language and national language only. That means English medium is, uh, is continuing. However, re-emphasis or more importance is given for mother tongue and local languages, at least up to grade five. The rest of the subjects, even if it is English, would be taught as a subject. Examination will be done in semesters from ninth to twelfth class. Now we are already experiencing it in ICSE as well as in CBSE. First semester, the students will have only multiple choice questions for the entire syllabus. And uh, that's how the semester-wise syllabus is bifurcated and the examination scheme also is going to be changed. No 10th board exams and only 12th board exams are going to be there. Four years of degree college. The MPhil course uh, closing down. The college degree would have three and four years. That is, a certificate will be given on the first year of graduation, diploma certificate for the second year, and of course, degree in the third year. Three-year degree is for those students who do not have to take their higher education. At the same time, students wanting to do their higher education would have to do a four-year degree. Students doing four years degree will be able to do MA in one year. That means MSc also it can be included, MCOM also it could be included based on the subject the student has taken for four years. In one year of time, you can do a master's. MA students will now be able to do PhD directly. If a student wants to do another course in the middle of a course, he or she can take a second course by taking a break for a limited time for the first course. A national educational scientific forum would be started. The virtual labs would be developed. So these are all the planning which has gone in for the NEP. There are 45,000 colleges in the country and uniform rules would be for all the government, private and deemed universities. So major set of highlights I have made a mention in this slide for national education policy. So major aspects that we need to remember as teachers is it is going to be 5334 format no 10th standard exam for the board exam appearance for children. It is only mm -hmm. for 12th standard. Degree course is going to be a change. It is either three years or four years. And MPhil course is going to be taken off. And uh, there can be a vocational course also 
in fact here i have not made a mention but vocational courses also can be taken right from 6th standard the coding in fact uh, computer software coding system can get developed like this many of the changes are coming up with respect to net okay so we have already seen this education policy cropping up now in the changed scenario how quick our teachers community are prepared to address and continue our uh, educators job is a question mark all of you please have a look at this learning pyramid it is depicting one important message to all of us the percentage of retention which is learned by the child is indicated in this triangle the blue coloration makes a mention of different methods of teaching and the retention which can happen for a listener it could be lecture method it could be reading it can be self reading audio visual method it also could be a demonstration method see all these methods are contributing for the learner but what percentage have a look lecture method something like 5% reading around 10% audio visual method around 20% so like this a scientific know how has come to us they are all called passive teaching methods under this passive teaching method the contribution is not to a greater extent but look at the red portion of this learning pyramid it is called participatory teaching method participatory teaching method has a dual advantage teachers on one side can save a lot of energy they need not teach but make the students learn there's a lot of difference between teaching and making the learning process happen so when i say it is a participatory teaching method it is implicable that it is an experiential learning both for the educator and the listener or the learner so it includes activities like group discussion practice by doing teaching others for example you take my own example now whatever little i have read analyzed and understood the moment i teach to others i will become more ripened i will become more mature i will be more confident for the next time to recall and tell it out so teaching others is the best way that's how all our teachers when they started teaching they became perfect for the conceptual ideas practice by doing of course group discussions they are all participatory teaching methods so in the today's presentation we are not uh, speaking anything about passive teaching methods which are good old chalk and talk method or it could be other work based methods work means visual auditory read and write or kinesthetic methods these are all supposed to be the passive teaching methods but consciously we are going towards participatory teaching methods some examples are given here like teaching others or practice by doing or group discussion so and so forth so one of the impressive effective methods under this category called participatory teaching method is something called experiential learning that means both the educator who is teaching is experience in something the participants who are involving in the lesson also are involved in gaining some experience and ultimately they learn all of you please observe here there is nothing called teaching mentioned that's why i already told you teacher need not teach teacher makes a student learn so that's the tagline with which we should have to go forward now an experiential learning the slide is depicting a certain activities for example you have a look at this tent the experience of children for an outbound activity happens in a tent it is another child playing with an animal a squirrel is is tackled by a child 
it can be a staircase it can be a triangle it can be a square it can be a rhombus or trapezium different mathematical shapes we call it as building as a learning aid the school building itself can work for an experiential learning of children children activity is depicted in this slide for different dimensions of mind to train for uh, understanding and practicing the activities so here there is again a depiction of an activity then a review then a concept then an experiment likewise in the slides ahead you will come to know how this experiential learning can be systematically implemented executed in a classroom so in my talk today i will take the conceptual idea of what is experiential learning what are its principles and also start giving relevant examples on the principles of experiment experiential learning so that teachers are aware that when we are venturing into the implementation of nep for effective vocational training it can be the effective uh, translation of our knowledge to children on different other platforms different ways and means tools and techniques can be used so uh, to reemphasize experiential learning is one of the effective participatory activities for children to learn on their own with the, with the teachers as a facilitator not to teach but make the children to learn so it involves chemistry experiments it involves biology experiments it involves group activities it involves outbound activities it it involves experimentation done by a group of children so a, a huge amount of scope is there in this heading called experiential learning uh the next slide shows about principles of experiential learning see it becomes very theoretical if i go on talk about principles one after the other so what i'll do is one principle i will read out immediately i will quote a relevant example that is been practiced in our school or in in your schools also you would have already done it and for the benefit of all the participants we shall recall or we shall uh, pour on our ideas ideate and emote out on what best can be done in each principle of this experiential learning to start with the first principle of experiential learning is human beings have a natural potentiality to learn uh i'll take an example then try to convince what exactly is this principle explaining all about uh we take up uh, an activity called say swimming on the lighter side to say say swimming can only be learned by plunging into water no student no teacher can make swimming learn through correspondence no there is no igno course there is no correspondence course for swimming to be learned through post only when the student plunges into water whatever experience he has in water under water or upon water he or she has to experience derive some plus and minus by the hand movement leg movement neck movement breath control whatsoever only then he or she will be able to propel in the front that means naturally we all have a capacity to learn by doing when we structure it very theoretical it might not work well but when you do it practically for the self it works really well cycling also no no catalog no salient features or no instruction manual can work for learning cycling na you give a cycle make trials and errors by the child cycling will come bicycling will come for balance in 10 days of time so when once either swimming or cycling is learned by a child it is never forgotten innately there is a capacity for us there is a potential for us to learn things and the first principle of experiential learning is allow children to err 
let them make mistakes no problem let them use their natural potential to learn on their own that's the first principle of experiential learning so uh, you can uh, you can see the western countries people have become uh, more confident more bold for their children to get into the swimming pool in the very young age they don't teach anything they just make the children to fall into the pool the child will naturally swing hand or legs and start start floating so that kind of liberty freedom for children to learn on their own must be created under this platform called the participatory activity or you also call it as experiential learning so the first principle is allow errors to happen from children make them learn from their own real time experience so that's the first principle the second one significant learning occurs when the learner perceives the relevance of the subject matter uh one simple example i'll tell you when a learner perceives the relevance of the subject matter it only happens when this 5e technique is used in the class uh, 5e technique means uh, engage you can have elaboration of the content you can have experimentation with the children stuff like that so for example uh, uh, friction forms heat if i use a simple sentence like this friction forms heat theoretically i write or i speak in a chalk and talk method in the classroom doesn't work well if i start doing this i rub the hand i start generating heat for myself children also do the same rubbing of hands for themselves they experience heat in their hand friction forms heat is demonstrated so whatever is learned theoretically if it is coincidentally experimented or made sure for children to involve in that activity the learning becomes more penetrative more effective that's the principle second principle of it, of experiential learning is involve in an experiment to demonstrate to instill confidence to learn by the child the third uh, hopefully everybody is uh, with me so far for uh, the examples that i quote for every principle what is been told at class am i yes. clear and audible yes, yes sir. sir yes yes sir oh. yes sir oh. Oh. learning involves a change in self organization and self perception okay see when i say it is self perception and self organization there's a change in the involvement of self involvement or the perception i'll i'll quote one example uh you say for example in commerce or in math you talk about arithmetic algebra geometry calculus trigonometry there are so many portions that we teach unless and until the student is made for involving himself or herself in negotiation skills bartering skills business skills through an activity arranged in the school it's not possible i say uh, we have a science exhibition likewise we also can have a commerce exhibition where the children can organize a business they can perceive an idea they can change the perspective of buying and selling by their self experience so in in one sentence to say just talking in the class within four walls might not work effectively for the days ahead of course in the past also it has not worked well in future also it might not be very effective for the listeners so we should be equipped to involve in giving more and more experiential learning to children by arranging activities for them outside the classroom the example like what i gave you the a business which is to be established which is to be involving the negotiation skills transaction of money to happen the 
charm of talking to people extempore non edited versions of talking to people convincing them to buy or to sell all such things should happen outside the classroom so i am indirectly hinting that experiential learning is a participatory activity done by children only when teachers allow children to go outside the classroom for outbound learning learning by doing learning by their self experience conceiving an idea and and of course analyzing it later that kind of activity should happen learning that threatens self perception is more easily perceived and assimilated when the external threats are at a minimum of course it is actually not making any sense if uh, theoretically if something like this is told but it is a very important principle of experiential learning if i say it is self perception is more easily perceived and assimilated when external threats are at a minimum can i request one of the participant to mute the mic please yeah see every every one especially when i tell uh, something like my own example i'll tell it becomes easy for the listeners to understand when i was in kannada medium till 7th standard after 8th i joined to english medium school language has become a problem however conceptually my perception of understanding maybe a dynamo maybe a biology or a mathematical or physics whatever the conceptual idea the teacher was teaching a solid opinion is already there in me but there is a fear that i may not write a right answer because it is asked in english so english medium expression of my answer has become troublesome to me because i have changed the medium however conceptually understanding of the subject what is supposed to be learned by me is already known to me so this principle of experiential learning is telling that as teachers we should not bind the students by the structure of learning by the grammar of english or by restrictions by rules and uh, norms which are put across which work more stronger as uh, a threatening atmosphere to them than the perceived idea of a concept to spell out right that's how all indian children who have gone abroad are doing very well in spite the language skills are not that great conceptually skill wise they are extremely good more than 80% of the doctors abroad are indians the skill of surgery or it could be diagnosis or it could be prognosis is excellent by indians except for language and the brought up standards maybe a small town boy will go to uk but the performance of him on a, a surgical skill is much better than a westerner reason being there is a, a a very strong perception of learning except for the language which was a threat earlier the child has come out of the threat and of course as an adult is performing extremely well so again and again this experiential learning is emphasizing that allow some mistakes to happen it's okay grammar problem it's okay rule is not followed it's fine so let the rules grammar such points need not be the hurdles for the conceived idea or conceptual idea for the child to express or to learn that is another principle of experiential learning learning occurs when the self is not threatened same thing the previous principle what i told same thing is manifested here also there should not be any threat of making an error if a mistake happens it's okay errors are the stepping stones for the the confident learning to happen in the next and subsequent steps that's the direction with which we all need to think much significant learning is acquired by doing see you take the example of uh, 
swimming or cycling i just began this uh, example how much ever theoretical explanation diagrams videos or demonstrations you give nobody can match the actual experience of swimming in water right so it is an acquired skill singing is an acquired skill learned skill learning can happen only when a significant scope is given for doing that's another important principle of it so uh, in other way around i can tell that youth in the 21st century will not believe our theoretical words only when they are allowed to do on their own acquire the skill then they'll start believing the conceptual idea then they start respecting the teacher for what they are trying to facilitate them for learning so learning is facilitated when the learner participates responsibly in the learning process so this is self explanatory for example i say uh, take a group discussion only when every participant in the group discussion is given a, an option to air out his view to ideate only then he or she will get satisfied that my view also was taken into account only then he'll start giving valid points for a discussion for a healthy discussion to arrive at a conclusion so gone are those days where you know the answer and you score well we are stepping into an age where it is arriving at the conclusion not knowing the answer but arriving at the answer there's a huge difference between knowing the answer and arriving at the answer as old time teachers if we have the mindset that this student do not know the answer i am wrong i should not expect that the student already knows the answer only then he is intelligent i should formulate i should create an environment where student participates he debates on he argues he accepts other pointers he always involves in a discussion a healthy discussion and arrives at a conclusion so arriving at a conclusion is more demanding more expected than knowing the answer so experiential learning say a play way method is used by playing student is involved in a competition he is giving his 100% to win at the end of a game as a logically framed or a suitably uh, framed game is given to a child an age appropriate game is given if you do an analysis of the game how it began how it pro progressed who won why there was a winning edge because of the loopholes of the other team or the opponent team so there is an analysis which is done on a game which is created for learning obvious for sure it helps a better learning a participatory learning an experiential learning so all the teachers community should have to get exposed to the different dimensions of making the learning process a participatory one an experiential one for deeper penetration of concepts for deeper understanding of children and uh, their their uh, learning levels will definitely enhance and their performance level definitely will go up so that's the kind of understanding we should have from this principle self initiated learning involves the whole person of course this is self explanatory self initiation is not happening in our classrooms nowadays why first of all we want to have a monologue i want to tell you want to listen that kind of teacher centric classrooms are there with us so all of us should have to open up for a learner centric classroom not teacher centric classroom from past 70 80 years teacher is in one corner all students are facing the teacher obvious for sure this picture will change in the next 4 5 years time the teacher is not center of the class the learners are the centers of the class so there can be different centers for learning it can be uh, a singing center it can be touch and feel center it can be reading center it can be writing center it can be visual center it can be an activity center so in one classroom 
there are at least five six learning centers so for every learning center the teacher will go and help out what challenge is given each group is given a different challenge each group will perform differently ultimately at the end of the class all the learner centers are addressed as an analysis by the facilitator not the teacher so the teacher centric classroom converting into learner centric classroom is the future and it is a very clear indication of experiential learning by the teacher as well as every learner in every learning corner of that classroom hopefully you can visualize what i am trying to tell one classroom having 30 or 40 students is made into five groups or six groups each group is given a different task one group for drawing another group for an activity another group for oratory skills another group for writing like this challenges are differently given in the same class we also call it as heterogeneous class heterogeneous class handling also is another name that could be given on the learner centric classroom that we are going to create so that is definitely uh, an ingredient of experiential learning i can say independence creativity and self reliance are all facilitated when self criticism and self evaluations are basic so with relation to what example i have told you like a learner centric classroom is created obviously there is an independence there is a creativity all such factors are equipped for children to learn much socially useful learning is learning process of learning and retaining an openness to experience so that the process of change may be incorporated into the self so what i am trying to uh, say from this last principle of experiential learning is there has to be a big banner for ourselves to challenge if only 30 or 40 students are there in a class if a child gets first rank in that class of 30 or 40 he should not feel that i am already a first ranker i am already a winner if the global standards come into picture if technology like we are using now is pitched in for a global standard of education globally the participants are airing out their view on a given concept on a given subject to air out their views how small a, stu a student who is there in a school in a small class number will really understand how small i am in comparison to a great set of ideas which are emerging from the same age group of children all over the globe so it's a social responsibility that a student will learn a useful learning will happen for every child unknowingly i would say that it is uh, unconsciously competent the children unconsciously will become competent when they are exposed to this kind of big banners using technology advantage so that kind of uh, experiential learning as principles need to be known so to run through these principles once again i have uh, prepared some of the pictures in the next and subsequent slides you will get some pictures you can register so at least some four or five major pointers of experiential learning and the executable ideas for this experiential learning uh, any questions to uh, whatever i have spoken so far i welcome them then i can proceed on. any questions please sir i have a doubt yes ma'am sir you were saying that the children should not be having any threat regarding grammar or english the way they present their answers or the concept yeah. but as far as english subject we are we have to do that right sir when they do their essays or writings so in that yeah. we have to okay okay ma'am one one example i'll give you uh, maybe the uh, uh, the essence of what i was trying to tell you may understand for example there is a millipede okay millipede or centipede it is walking with uh, more than 200 legs millipede is comfortably walking right so first you should allow the millipede to walk more than 200 legs more than 400 legs it has there is no math there is no grammar there is no rule 
obviously it is comfortably moving so first we should allow the millipede to move if you start asking question to the millipede in what angle you are keeping your leg with what speed the first leg to the to the second leg you are keeping yeah millipede stops walking it really cannot walk because it gets confused that what is she asking so the view is allow the children to proceed learning after they learn something small rectifications can happen step by step that's the view okay sir thank you all right okay any other questions please sir uh, excuse me sir uh, related to the same question Uh, yes. I would I would add one more thing. Uh, so when we are correcting the child who is getting full marks, uh, in such cases we can correct. I think the grammatical in in languages. Uh, as you told, for the below average students, we can let them go with a small mistake. And yeah, it's like uh, giving it's crutches. Right? It is like giving crutches. Give crutches to start moving. Yes. Slowly remove the crutches. No. To start with, you should push the child. even though if you are wrong it's okay you proceed learning after learning a little then slowly uh, tighten the clutches so that the mistakes will become minimum so the momentum is got the taste of success is got for children to start with then they obviously move forward for greater learning experiential learning is do some mistake learn from it analyze conceptualize the idea go forward that's the kind of cycle that we are talking about when i when i project the next set of slides you will reemphasize with the pictorial representation which is shown on can we proceed now yes yes sir all right okay this is one person called cobbs cobbs cycle of experiential learning is a very famous very uh, universally accepted concept is this let's see how it works somebody can unmute please mute mute sorry some audio disturbance is there can you yes thank you see uh this slide very clearly says four points the first point is about concrete experience try it out to see what happens next is reflective observation analyze the experience view from multiple perspectives see for example uh, a child is trying to walk or a child is trying to swim or to cycle or to uh, do an activity with a toy or whatever if you analyze the experience you get what is what is going right or what is going wrong can be very easily identified that's what it is reflective observation abstract conceptualization correct the ideas link to existing knowledge and understanding of course ultimately active experimentation formulate a hypothesis plan action and test it so principle of cobbs cycle of experiential learning is all about the four steps involved commencing from concrete experience reflective observation abstract conceptualization and active experimentation i would like to quote one example here uh for the listeners they might uh, like the example you can do it in your school also and you can check how important or how effective it is to imbibe values among children uh we did this uh, activity in our school uh, some time back of course when the physical school was there all children by their class teachers by their subject teachers are branded some for good quality some for the negative qualities so what i told is we fixed up a uh, assembly say one week before only the assembly the announcement was done in the, all the classes that class teachers need to announce to all the children to pen down a list of negative qualities that often been heard by them through their parents through their friends through their teachers through their relatives so commonly what is the criticism that the child gets from their 
friend circle, from the relatives, from their parents, from their teachers. So in three, four days of time, the children consciously write whatever is constantly being targeted on them as a negative value. Okay. So on the assembly day, when all the children are standing in the assembly after the prayer, we brought out a effigy of Ravana. Ravana's effigy we brought because Ravana, according to Hindu mythology, is depiction of negative values. In front of the entire assembly, the Ravana's effigy was burnt, was put into fire. A big fire of Ravana's effigy started happening in the assembly. Okay. Then as a principal of the school, I announced class-wise, children who have penned down their negatives, select the most common, the most uh, repeatedly told negative on you, form a chit of that, form a small chit of the most often spoken of negative value on you, write it on the paper, in the line you come, burn it with the effigy of Ravana. Okay, that assembly went on for half an hour. In place of 10 minutes, that assembly went on for half an hour. Okay, so the child has conceived the idea of what negative value it has been targeted by the society. On one particular day in the assembly, all of a sudden, an opportunity came for burning that negative value, not disclosing to anybody. Secretly, the child herself or himself knows that what is so very strongly negative in me, consciously took the chit and burnt in the effigy of Ravana. After half an hour, the child goes back to the class. At least for the next one week to 10 days of time, that negative value that the child had in mind, being targeted by everybody, will not repeat. Because the child has consciously identified the negative, consciously wrote, secretly burnt it in the assembly. Okay? So this is an example for an experiential learning by the child by doing an activity. I'll take a bet if the child of 7th standard or 8th standard over 10 years of time completes a graduation, gets married, gets their children, they would definitely tell when I was in 7th standard, my principal had arranged an assembly where I had identified a negative value that the society has targeted on me. I have burnt it on so-and-so date. From then, I have not repeated that negative value. Likewise, you also as my child inculcate some value by doing. So that kind of a perpetuating value can imbibe in society by a very powerful tool like experiential learning. Okay? So, Theoretically, whatever we speak within four walls, it might not work that effectively with children of that age, with bubbling spirit. You use their own spirit, you use their own energy for making them realize that what is right and what is wrong. That stays for long. They have experienced it for their self. That stays for long. That's the essence of experiential learning. So, the National education policy is expecting the Indians, all of us to work together in making the realization of potential of children through vocational course, through certificate course, through uh, their digital learning, through the coding, through experiential learning. So basically we are trying to understand how we can make the children participate for learning. So teaching has become an old style. Learning is the, the forefront that has become the limelight now. So we all need to switch over from teaching mode to learning mode. So the teacher's teaching style should match the learning style of the learners. So it can happen when an experiential learning is workable.
Any questions, please? Okay, shall I proceed? Be beautiful, sir. We will uh, try it out in our course class. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, uh, we'll go one step ahead of the principle. The principle of experiential learning we already learnt. According to Cobb's model of experiential learning, one more slide I have prepared. Pictorially, it's about five steps, which is shortlisted as do reflect and apply, do an experience, share and process after analysis. It's called reflection. When you say it is apply, it is to generalize and apply, of course apply as an experimentation. Uh, we'll take up an example. Um, in a school or I say in a class, a teacher makes a group of boys and a group of girls. She is not teaching or he is not uh, doing any initiation of uh, uh, some knowledge to be transferred to children. He or she as a teacher wants to derive what exactly is running in the mind of the children. Boys versus girls, rather. Okay. So, uh, one subject is given. Say, for example, uh, we'll take a burning uh, topic, say, like bullet train. Okay. Is bullet train required for India or not? A subject is only opened by the teacher. She is not telling or he is not telling about what is bullet train, what is the capacity of bullet train with what speed he can go, where is bullet train over the world, where is it in Japan, where is it in China, no. He has only written a topic on the board. Today's topic of discussion is bullet train. Whatever the kinds of questions that can be posed on bullet train, one set of questions are ready for boys, another set of questions are ready for girls. Okay. So, for every question that the teacher asks, whatever is the expression that comes and output that comes from boys is listed out. Whatever that answers that come from girls also is listed out. A proper analysis is done within 40 minutes of time. The entire concept of bullet train as, as far as children mindset, as far as the entire ambience of the class goes is understood by everybody. So hopefully, what kind of experience you should give to children for sharing, for processing and analyzing, for generalizing and connecting one thought process to another thought process, like in a group discussion, it can happen. And whatever the value it is derived, it can go as overall comprehension, written comprehension, participatory activity. It can be like fish tank. It can be like, you, you name it, you have it. So it can be in the written form. It can be in the oral exercise. This concept of do it, reflect it, and apply can work under experiential learning. So it, it can be circumstantial. It can be age appropriate. It can be class appropriate. Teacher can decide what kind of activity could be done. And it becomes an experiential learning. It's not like uh, experiential learning is uh, something different from what we are doing. But the approach of teachers under this heading, appropriate under NEP, National Education Policy, according to me, should really work like uh, the best planning should happen from the teachers. The execution will naturally happen in classes for self-learning, exploring the potential of every child as per their potential, as per their capacity can happen. So that's the view on experiential learning. This is very interesting uh, statistics in this slide. You have a look at it, 70, 20, and 10. 70% experiential working with new and challenging experiences. Suppose, uh, I take my own example again. Uh, it becomes interesting for uh, criticizing the self or uh, taking out an introspection on the self. 
uh, when I went from Kannada medium to English medium school in uh, Chikmagalur in Karnataka, I had a, a huge amount of experience of uh, the English school from a, a Kannada background, the boy who has gone to the school. Every experience counts on me for learning every English word, every meaning of it, the style of its expression and usage of power of words. So, uh, when, when, when I share an experience like this, you'll come to know, when it was a, a PET class, when it was a physical education teacher's class, all children used to mingle. They work with each other for a group activity and they'll, they will get enthralled at the end of winning or losing or whatsoever. But I was isolated because I was not knowing to speak good English and I was isolated. So I made a mischief of uh, out of isolation. Then I was punished for the entire day. Imagine right from morning uh, 9.30 till 4.30 in the evening, I was tied up for a tree. Both my hands were at the back, tree in the middle. And I used to rotate entire field. I used to see right from 9.30 to 4.30. I see, I see around trees, activities happening in the school, teachers going to the classes, bandmaster teaching a set of band to the students. In fact, I learned the maximum on that day compared to four walls to which I was experiencing in the class. In fact, the punishment day what I had in my school called Mountain View High School in Chikmagalur is in my memory still after 50 years, the learning that I had on that day is imprinted in me in the critical age of my age standard, I learned a lot of things in one day that I couldn't learn in the whole year, maybe within four walls. I learned how the teachers will go from their staff room to their classes. What is the discipline of teachers based on the timing given to them? Which classroom will have a PET class in the ground? How many classes of PT classes will happen in a day? How many band sets are there in our school? How much is the temperature outside? If we are sitting inside, you will come to will not come to know at all. But how temperature, how the shade will vary? How is the sun movement in the sky? How is the striated muscle and non-striated muscle in my body working? If I recall the learning for me on that particular day is equivalent to almost one year of learning. So the first point, which is marked in blue, is talking about working with new and challenging experiences contributes up to 70%. Social learning, building communities and special interest groups, mentoring and coaching. Social learning is another important aspect. I again take my own school's example. Senior students teaching to the junior classes was a concept in my school. When the teacher teaches math, I'm not comfortable at all. I, first of all, I don't know English at that time. And mathematical concepts are not understood by me as well. So it was a learning practice for me to learn science, maths, English, social science, various subjects taught by my seniors to the junior classes, it is called the school camp. In the school camp, there is something called Campus Connect. All the campus students are connected. Soon seniors are teaching to the juniors. So 10th standard student is teaching to 8th standard student. 9th standard student teaching to 6th standard student. Likewise, when the student teaches to their juniors, the learning becomes more effective. So we can ask questions more boldly, more confidently. Any silly question is okay because he's a senior. He'll answer me. But the same silly question I cannot answer for my teacher because there's a complex. So social learning is all about learning in an outbound activity, learning through a game, learning through a senior, 
learning through my friend all are the samples for social learning so 70% of it is experiential 20% it is social learning please think whatever we are doing mechanically what we are doing is only 10% it is about structured courses training workshops and e learning is contributing to the least so uh, the emphasis of this slide is blue and yellow part is bigger than a small red part so we should not stick on to only red zone we need to come to yellow zone it definitely possibly we can come to blue zone also so this slide is all about coming from 10 towards 20 then of course move towards 70 so some other examples i have quoted here in this slide like project based learning case based learning enquiry based learning problem based learning clinical experiences pros and cons of grid cross age peer tutoring student teaching i already told about student teaching study abroad make a mnemonic field trip activities service learning volunteering activity fish bowl apprenticeship prodigy fellowships internships uh, practicums undergraduate research various other programs can be done there is no limit actually the teacher is the ultimate who can decide who can be a boss to decide on what kind of experiential activity that they would give for children on one side teachers will save energy a lot of energy is saved for teachers a well planned experiential learning can make the students learn on their own there is no need of teaching done by the teacher straining herself or himself he can only be a facilitator for an experience to happen for children and they learn comfortably uh i'll quote one more example and then maybe uh, proceed to the next slide if i say volunteering uh we have set a club in our school called alarm club okay a l a r m alarm club like housewise activities that we do we create varieties of clubs among children another club called uh, event management club another club uh, called the human etiquettes club it can be see personality development club so if i open up such of the topics it's very evident that i am not doing anything except for giving a blueprint for children i'm giving a blueprint for the students that event management club activity should be for 8 8 hours in one term of the school i will propose the personality development club should have to do so and so things i will give again guidelines alarm club should have to do so and so activities you make the students volunteer in participating for each of these clubs see the difference you get to see how they participate how they bring out ideas how they how they boldly bring in change in themselves and their groups so that's the kind of uh, volunteering activity that you should have to initiate among students uh, maybe online also we can try out for these clubs in our school we are already doing about these club activities there is a guideline given there is a concerned teacher allocated to it there is an accountability of how they do it and how they take it forward so some examples of experiential learning i tried to give it over here to give uh, a chance for student to volunteer for the activities plan uh this is uh, the last but one slide one more slide i have is only to say thank you to all of you this list is into six areas please have a look at all the six areas they are like six windows no other window through which a student can learn other than this it can be through listening it can be through speaking it can be through reading and kinesthetic activity it can be through writing it can be through visual activity or it could be demonstration so uh anyway i'm sharing this uh, ppt with uh, uh, the organization 
you can definitely take it forward you can also have an accountability of this activity by your teachers done in the classes in an excel sheet a, an in charge teacher will write down on a, a systematic pattern on a monthly basis you will come to know how many teachers have used what tools in their class as a variation for example uh, a teacher has five classes of math in a week we will tell as a school ma'am out of five classes at least two classes should be different types of classes that you give than the chalk and talk method to introduce the number of varieties of classes giving experience of children to learn on their own we make a humble beginning that out of five classes two classes should be different strategy built classes than a normal chalk and talk method i have already started working on it uh, from the last five years i've been getting fantastic results in fact at the end of the month i have a data stating that which teacher has used what tool in her subject or in his subject for a different kind of explanation of course this is a very one day workshop in fact i need to uh, spend almost a full day for explaining how each activity could be done but i'm just uh, putting a, a summarized view on how you can execute it and monitor it or accountability in a school can be uh, taken forward by using these activities or expressions by the teachers in their subjects so if such an accountability is there by every teacher in doing a variety of class on a weekly basis obvious for sure experiential learning becomes a part and parcel of your schooling so nep is automatically in place experiential learning is automatically in place so that's the way in which we need to execute the types of classes to be insisted on the teacher this slide is full of children and uh, a small ground of uh, the snake and ladder been written right so you must have seen already that uh, a variety of uh, uh, youtube activities are shown whatsapp university is there now you have saw a lot of stuff coming up in whatsapp or youtube a variety of games are possible to be played by children to learn i was talking about bala in the beginning building as a learning aid one sampling is shown here where children are allowed to play by play they learn and the teacher will only analyze how the entire learning has taken place both at the individual level and at the class level at the end of our class so this is the kind of expectation from this topic called experiential learning i am sure that uh, most of you must have seen a variety of activities like this once we systematically start executing such activities in school it becomes uh, the purpose of experiential learning to be fulfilled in us so i think i'm done with the content for in the time given uh, it is already 6:10 uh, we will have an interactive session if you have questions i would be more than happy to answer them So sir, I have a question on NEP. Uh, yes. Sir, now we have done uh, MA in uh, uh, one subject, Canada, for example. Okay. Uh, in in now, if we want to take PhD, sir, uh, can we change any subject like uh, psychology or education, something like that? Is it possible? Ma'am, uh, the background of your uh, post graduation should okay. match with. the subject that you are going to choose for phd as of now okay. as of now without nep being implemented suppose you want to do uh, a phd in a concept of math okay okay so you want to select a psychology as a subject like you are telling now psychology yes, is sir. no more an art subject it is a science subject now yes sir so if you are a canada ma 
and you want to do uh, a phd in psychology related subject as of now not possible okay as of now when this nep is getting introduced okay you will have a scope for making a bridge course a vocational course between canada and psychology as a subject maybe okay. it's a possibility to do phd also when the okay. new nep policy comes into picture oh wonderful sir thank you yes thank you yeah any any other interesting questions if uh, i'll try to answer possible should i have to stop the presentation and come on screen then so please yes sir that that will be better sir yeah we'll get to see everyone oh like uh... yes yeah. hopefully uh, everybody uh, could uh, follow my pace of talking or uh, any doubts if they have they can ask me i'm sorry if i have gone fast because in the in the time given i thought i'll cover up a uh, major set of stuff uh, if anything to be elaborated please ask me i'll try to do that sir good evening sir can you uh, sir good evening sir is this activities uh, in the online classes yes ma'am some activities are quite possible online also and I, uh, we need to take a call on uh, which is which has to be sorted out for online and which has to be on the uh, physical schooling so for example i said an assembly activity that cannot happen for uh, the online but the club activities are what i told it can be alarm club it can be personality development it can be event management it can all happen online also sir i have a question yes ma'am um sir actually before that let me tell you i'm very happy that you are from chikmagalur and uh, kannadiga very nice so proud of you <laughs> and uh, actually nowadays what has happened is during pandemic the students have lost the uh, writing skills they are trying to inculcate this sms language and uh, uh, you know like you are and all that they are not uh, getting that um, uh, english proper writing skills so what else can we do when they come back to school of course that's again in the courts we do not know when they are coming back to school but uh, when they come back to school how can we improve their writing skills thank you sir okay ma'am uh, uh, to my flash as of now i have two versions of answers for this first version of answer is there is nothing called a ready soup ready made answer for the kind of tantrums that we are going to see from children so we should actually face them get to see what kind of difficulty they have what kind of behavioral tantrums what kind of arrogance what kind of uh, the outreach uh, activities they would do accordingly we need to uh, formulate a strategy to handle them so uh, it's it's hypothetical to assume that uh, uh they would not listen to us or they would listen to us in a different way accordingly we need to handle them that is first part of the answer second version of the answer is it might so happen that so much of writing skill is not asked by the examination corner itself the examination pattern now for 9th and 10th batch of students at present as you know first semester is asking only multiple choice questions to be ticked so half of the portion is not demanding the students lengthy writing at all it's only multiple choice questions only in the second term it can be a combination of multiple choice and subjective questions so if we are thinking that very long descriptive answering skill of writing is essential for children in the days ahead we may be wrong we may be right also but we may be wrong one more step ahead i'll go and tell as per cambridge curriculum norms caie norms there is an option already available where a student if he is good enough in the conceptual idea 
but not able to write it properly in the given time computer also can be used a typed answer also is acceptable according to cambridge curriculum so an advanced thinking if you do the days ahead in the next 7 years 10 years of time if you can imagine there may be an examination corner it demands a typed answer also it could be like when i was talking about the education that i have got tables by hearting a table was very important every teacher used to tell if you know don't know tables you are gone you will be weak in math now the pattern of thinking has changed the child need not by heart tables the child can use the vedic mathematics can use abacus such of the tools for mathematics to solve or equate or to calculate so the earlier versions of this is a must might fade away and we may be we must be ready for the change in scenario like i hinted you with with the pretext of cambridge with the pretext of change the examination corner for the present batch of 9th or 10th years it may not be a lengthy uh, writing answering skills is required to be given for children anymore that also may be a possible hopefully i have tried to answer your question thank you so much sir thank you any more questions we'll wind up the session thank you teachers for participating thank you raghuvi sir seema yes uh, thank you uh, sir the the amount of uh, messages that are flooding in the chat box with the thank you messages actually shows the the amount of learning that the uh, teachers had today it was a great session uh, uh, undoubtedly and this is a huge learning and it actually shows the amount of experience knowledge that you carry and uh, i'm sure all the teachers have taken abundance of knowledge uh, gained abundance of knowledge and learning today so thank you so much for all the efforts that you have taken and uh, i uh, you know i uh, really appreciate and i really thank you from the whole heart for doing taking all the efforts that you have taken today for this uh, webinar sir thank you thank you thank, thank you all sir. for your valuable thank time you, see you all thank you sir thank you sir thank you teachers ma'am and sir thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir and madam